So today I'm going to do a tutorial on makeup from the 80s and 90s. Um, so I'm going to do one half of my face will be 80s, the other half is going to be 90s. Um, so I'm going to start with the 80s side when I do it. So everything in the 80s was very vibrant, very um, intense, pretty much like more is more. Um, so even if you decide to go with colors that aren't quite as vibrant as what I'm going to do, because I'm going to go for like the more colorful side of the 80s when I do this, um, even more natural colors, like when people were wearing like those bronzier shades, they were still very like punched up. Um, nothing was really subtle uh, as far as 80s makeup goes, so that's sort of like the most important thing um, to remember here when you're doing this makeup. Um, so I already have on my foundation and concealer. Um, I have on like a little bit of contour and blush and highlight. Um, so on the 90s side, as far as like adding a little bit more blush goes, I'm just going to do like a hint of blush because if you remember um, back from the lecture, um, makeup in the 90s, the look was more of like a fresh face as far as like skin is concerned. Everything in the 90s was more about like the eyebrows, the eyes, and the lips. Um, so I'm not going to go quite as heavy um, on contour and blush. I just did just enough so that way if I was on stage, um, my face would have a little bit of dimension. Um, but I'm not going to go as intense with it as I am in the 80s because as we all know um, from the lecture and probably just from um, life in general, blush in the 80s was a huge deal. Um, so everything on this side is just going to be a lot stronger as far as my face goes. Um, so I thought since that's going to be like a little bit different um, than what we are typically doing in class um, and for stage makeup in general, I wanted to um, kind of do a little demo of that. So the very first thing we'll do is blush. Um, I'm going to start with just the 90s side just so you can kind of see um, just sort of more of like a typical like blush application and then um, we'll go in and we're going to do the 80s. Um, so for the 90s side I'm just going to use like my typical blush color. Um, I think something that's probably like a little bit pinkier is probably a little bit better um, for 90s makeup or a lot of times you see people with like that kind of just like bronzier tone. Um, so even like if I had like the way that my contour is, my contour is sort of like a rosy bronzy color so if that were just carried a little bit further, I could probably do that as a blush as well. Um, but for the 90s look, I'm just going to keep um, my blush just kind of where you would typically do it. So it's going to be just more on the cheeks, and then I just kind of pull it back into my hairline. So again, so that's just so, um, especially for stage makeup, you have a little bit of color on your face. If you go on stage and you're just completely like clean face, like a lot of people 90s, maybe they weren't wearing blush, um, but they're not necessarily under really intense stage light all the time, so that's what you always have to kind of keep in mind um, for things like this is that you have to remember that you are designing makeup for stage, um, so it's going to be a little bit different than what we would see in real life. Um, so for the 90s, I'm just going to leave it like that for now. Um, so for the 80s, we're going to do things a little bit differently. Um, now me personally, in my everyday life, I pretty much wear my blush like 80s style, like almost every day. Um, not quite as intense in color all the time, but the placement is pretty much how I always like to wear it. Um, so in the 80s, it's more of like a face framing sort of blush. So you see people that carry their blush all the way from here, all the way up to their temples. Um, and even like a little bit like onto the eye sometimes too. Um, so I'm going to layer three different colors with this. Um, I already have on a couple, right? Like I already have on my base shadows. Um, and again, that's just to like give my face a little bit of structure. Not necessarily because that's like the period accurate thing to do. Um, but mostly just so that, again, if this were like a stage makeup or it's being photographed even, um, it looks good for those situations. Just because if the face is totally flat and there's no dimension, um, it's going to look a little strange once it gets under lights or gets on camera um, or whatever it is that the situation may be. So you just have to remember, we're not doing this for everyday life, it is for stage. Um, so I'm going to layer the lightest color first and then I'm going to build it up to the darkest one. So the lightest one I have is sort of a like shimmery purple color. Um, I would say as far as like blush is concerned in the 80s, probably like pinks and like fuchsias, um, so kind of like purple shades are probably going to be a little bit more um, on the popular side and it, it needs to be intense. Um, so I'm going to start it on my cheek and then I'm going to go all the way up. And again, um, it's going to look a little bit more subdued um, since this is just on camera but um, I assure you that in real life this is very very intense uh, and then I'm even gonna look in other mirror just to see how this is going so again um, this is just step one <laughs> color number one um, but you can see that um, it's not just going right here I think a lot of people have the tendency to just put blush in like one spot no matter what it is even if it's just something normal I think it's usually more flattering um, if it goes back into the hairline a little bit um, just because that way it kind of helps to shape the face and it's not just like um, a little bit of color and you have to be careful too on some people if it's too close um, into the center of the face it actually kind of like shortens their face a little bit and it's not necessarily like the most flattering um, so you want to make sure that 
um, you choose the blush placement that looks best on somebody while still keeping a period. So maybe like somebody doesn't look as good having their blush right here, even if you pull it back a little bit, make sure you pull it back all the way, um, especially for the 80s too. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to add a little bit more to my temple and then I'm not going to really worry about if it gets near my eyebrow. Um, and so one thing you have to think about um, when you're doing stuff like this is you have to think about what somebody's hair is going to be like if it's going on stage. If somebody's going to have um, a wig, especially like a lace front one, you want to make sure that you're probably going all the way back into their hairline with it just so that way um, it looks as natural as possible once the wig is on. Um, I would highly recommend if somebody is going to have to do blush this intense or like contour this intense or they have like any kind of colorful makeup that they're doing, I would do that before somebody puts a wig on um, just because trying to get it to line up correctly um, and trying to get it either like over the lace you're gonna stain your lace and that's gonna be a little bit tricky to clean later or sometimes that makes the lace show up more um, I just think it's better if you can do that first and then you can put wigs and whatnot on top of it um, since they're just powders it shouldn't really interfere with how much um, the wig or whatever it is is going to adhere down but if you are having trouble adhering it down then you might have to alter the makeup um, and not have it go this far back um, and you might just have to like pop it back to here instead and like maybe just like put some of the pinky color here and skip this part so that it doesn't look um, totally weird and unnatural um, if it is under the lace front wig. Um, okay now that my little spiel on wigs um, I'm gonna go to my next color um, which is just more of like a pinky fuchsia shade um, so this one is really, really intense. This stuff's super pigmented. Um, so you gotta be careful with it. So it's gonna get really bright, um, really quickly. But you do have to remember that you are doing stuff for stage, um, at least with what, like, this video is concerned with, right? So you have to think, like, if you're in a really, really large theater and you're really far away, like, if I'm up close to somebody talking to them, like, this might seem really, really normal and, like, this might seem totally insane, right? But if you're really far away, um, that's probably just going to look like normal blush. Um, so that's something you always have to, like, remind yourself and remind your actors, too, is that um, you have to take a step back from it just because if you are constantly, like, this close to your face and you're looking at something like this, um, it's going to be really hard for you to just, like, understand that you are doing it correctly and to be okay with um, the intensity of the color. Um, and then again, I'm going to pull it up. And when you're doing it, you just want to make sure that it's really, really blended. Um, you don't want to have, like, any blocky color. So this is going to be kind of like a blend into my um, foundation and then I'm going to go back in with like a foundation powder and some highlight and blend it even more but you just want to make sure that um, it's more of a shape and it's not just like a harsh line um, and again I'm going to let kind of it carry like over into my eyebrow um, I pretty much I mean it's a little bit toned down from this but like honestly like I would wear this much this blush almost in like real life um but it is one of the situations where if people are not used to wearing blush uh if you do have them go like super 80s and like you know we're talking more like Cindy Lauper or like Madonna 80s or something like that um it might be hard for people to like um be comfortable with it just because this is very very different than what um we typically look like um so just know it might be kind of it might be a little bit tricky um, to get people on board with this at first but again that's why it's always really important um, to have them practice to look at it under the lights together just so that you can see that um, the intensity that you're seeing this close up is definitely going to look completely different um, when somebody is on stage and they're under bright lights um, and the very last thing I'm going to do so I have a darker color that's kind of like a berry I'm just going to go in like right here and on the edges with it and that's just going to help to contour my face just a little bit more because um, again even if they weren't necessarily like contouring um, I know, like, for my face shape that I prefer how it looks when I do have, like, a little bit of, like, contour and depth. Um, and I think it just reads better in photos and video and on stage. So I'm going to go ahead and just add in that own, um, that part just, um, for my own. Just because I know what looks more flattering on my face as opposed to what's, like, perfectly period. And again, that's something that, um, you always want to keep in mind. Um, so at this point, you would want to go back in and just kind of, like, blend it out. So whether that is with, um... A, like powder foundation or um, I usually use like a, a powder highlighter that has like a little bit of a shimmer but it's not like a glitter um, and I think that always helps it blend kind of nicely so I'm gonna go ahead and go back in um, and do that and then again so if you feel like you have too much anywhere um, that's when I like to go back in with like the highlighter and I do this just like in my regular makeup too and I just kind of like blend everything back out. 
um, I usually like to use like little like flatter brushes like this just because I feel like the, um, I don't know, something about the shape, I feel like it really helps to like pack the color on and it also helps to blend it really nicely. Um, so that is usually what I end up doing. And then you're going to go right on top of the blush and like over it. So this kind of blush is going to go higher up than what you would usually see um, like in your regular beauty makeup. So you're going to have a little bit more color closer to your eye than you're probably used to. Um, but you can still kind of go back and blend and soften if you feel like you need to. And I'm just going to do that over all of it. And I just think that kind of helps kind of blend it and like blur it all together. And then I can go back and do that on this side since I applied a little bit more. And that just kind of blends everything together. And again, so this is technically a highlighter, but it's not, um, and you're blending your neck right, so we don't want to be a floating head. Um, it's a highlighter, but it's not like a super glittery one. Um, but in some parts where I notice like it's a little bit shiny, I will want to go back in with like a matte setting powder um, and make sure that everything stays really matte so that I wouldn't necessarily like look sweaty or something um, if I was on stage. So that's just like a, a little bit about what blush in the 80s was. I hope that makes a little bit more sense. Um, the next thing we're going to start working on is eye makeup.